Hi there everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I now have the table you saw in one of the recent videos, which shows uh, this Singer 201 table that uh, was used for God knows what. And earlier you saw me put one coat, not multiple, just one coat of shellac as a sealer. Uh, it's not a finished coat at all and was never intended to be. And my goal was to seal in these these exposed wood areas, hoping that that would even out my application of the restore finish. And here is the four aught or four zero steel wool that I mentioned in some of my earlier videos. Uh, now the restore finish product comes in many colors. Uh, these are two of them. You've seen me using the walnut and the mahogany. They also have oaks and light oak and dark oak and so forth. Now, the maple pine is a lighter color. The, the table itself, I believe, is actually made of oak, but that's irrelevant because remember, with, when it comes to wood colors, uh, these names like cherry and maple are only really useful in terms of trying to kind of have a reference for what the color is going to look like. It's not like paint, obviously. And so it has very little to do with whether the, 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 the table itself is made of cherry or pine because it's actually made of neither. But we're really looking at the color. What color do we want? Now the mahogany table I have, it just so turns out that the mahogany color in restore finish was very close. So again, you wanna think less in terms of like, oh, I don't understand what kind of wood I have. Think again about the color of the wood and then use the colors within a product line like the Restore Finish to help gauge what color you're gonna need. I'm gonna start with maple pine. Um, this stuff tends to look darker when it goes on, and then if I need to, I can come to the cherry color. Uh, and remember, keep in mind, this is a, what, 70-year-old table by now, so of course it has aged, and a lot of woods and their finishes typically will darken over time. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the the Maple Pine Restore Finish. And we'll take a look and see what it does. And again, as I think I mentioned before, make sure you're well ventilated when you do any of this stuff. I, I sure have to be. Um, and, I, and I think everyone does. All of the instructions on the backs of these products tell you to get very good insulation. Um, and that may involve wearing a, a mask that is fume, fume filtering. Now, um, uh, also, of course, you never want to pour this product straight onto furniture, right? We're going to put it onto, in this case, the steel wool. I'm going to come across and see what it does. Now, I may zoom in a bit here so you guys can get a little bit better picture of what's happening. And, you know, just like I've shown in the other videos I've done with this product. Um, this is by far the roughest table you guys have seen me try to try to bring back. And again, it's not about stripping. It's not about uh, sanding down and starting over because I don't want to refinish the, the, the furniture. I don't want to devote the time to it. Uh, I much prefer to do what, what you're seeing. Um, now you may have a table that's so far gone that even its veneers are, you know, coming off. You have to decide for yourself how rustic you would like your table to look. But every one of these tables that I've done, I've done this for years, I've used this product and finally got around to making videos about it because I've been focusing so many of my videos on the machines that sometimes we forget just we forget that the tables and the cabinets also need maintenance and care, not nothing like the machines do. But, you know, here again, these things have sat in different places. I think I mentioned you guys, this one sat in a garage. One of the things that the steel wool does is, this is a fine uh, level of coarseness on this steel wool, but what it actually does is, it, it kind of bites into the old surface just enough to help the restore finish kind of get in there and do its thing. Uh, if you have a table that just has light scratches, usually a soft cloth is all I ever need. But as you guys have seen, this table is, uh, it's kind of a hard luck case, but 
But it's all aesthetics. I mean, the table is strong and it's ready to hold that 201 again when I get it restored. But, and as you guys can see, I'm kind of pushing off towards the edge. This is something you definitely want to do with any old or any piece of furniture because you never know um, if that veneer is loose. And if it is, you don't want to pull it off inadvertently. And again, this is not really a stain. I don't know what's in, in this product, but I can tell you that I know that there must be some sort of oils, some sort of oil and coloring agent because um, they come in colors. But again, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible what, what, you, what I'm getting here. If you just guys are just watching, let me turn the camera and you'll see what's going on over here. You know, it's really helping, really making a difference. And I really feel that that shellac has really, has helped even things, okay? It's not, it's not factory finish or anything, but if I didn't have that shellac there, guys, you would be seeing a much, uh, a much, uh, much more contrasty and splotchy surface. And I just want to kind of give it a little up, a little freshening, if you will. And of course, once you apply this product, according to the company that, that, that sells it, you are supposed to, um, you're supposed to wipe it off. You don't leave this product sitting on the furniture. It's not a polish, okay? It's kind of a little bit of a cleaner and a stain and a lacquer softener in one. That's my take on it. I don't know if that's actually what it is, but it's what it feels like. And of course, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to wipe the excess off, let it air out and dry, and then I'll come back with the, um, I will come back with the, the feed and wax. Some of you may have other furniture polishes, but feed and wax is, uh, is pretty good stuff. And it's by the same company. The point is moisturize the wood after you've done this. So there you go, everyone. Uh, I think it's a pretty dramatic improvement. And again, it's, uh, I've got some of this remnants of the paint. I thought this was paint. Actually, this is um, some green that came off of the, uh, the old sewing seat. Apparently, it must have been stored at one point with the seat up top. Uh, in any case, all of you will get to decide, obviously, how far you want to go with these projects. But I really like being able to, to clean up, to dress up, to stabilize the, the tables and the cabinets, along with the machines that I restore. And we're taking care of things, and I think my thought process on this is that, well, if it looks better, it has a better chance of being invited indoors into someone's house, and maybe they are uh, more inclined to leave it in the home and more inclined to use their machines, which is the reason I do these restorations anyway. Most of the machines uh, and most of the tables that I restore are not rare. <clears throat> they really are not, but they need care. And once they get it, hopefully they will continue on and living new lives in uh, what I describe as, what I like to describe as heirloom quality, something you don't see much anymore. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. I don't know how many more cabinet uh, videos I've got coming. We'll just see what appears. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.